When I just started my journey as a data scientist, Git and GitHub were things that used to scare me because people tend to overcomplicate them. First, Git is different from GitHub. Git is basically how you save the progress of your projects and how you can collaborate as well. And GitHub is where you store all those savings that you do within your project. Basically, when you use GitHub is where you can share with the world, they can use your code, you can use theirs. But Git can be used locally just to save your progress within your own machine. And it is useful so that you can revert back to a previous work if needed. Let's say, for example, you ended up deleting a file, but you didn't want to. If you didn't use Git, you end up losing the file completely. But if you did use Git and you saved your progress, then you can go back and revert to whatever point you want to go back to. So in this video, let me simplify for you how Git works. We're going to do a hands-on so you can do it with me. And we will use very simple terms so you can understand that you don't feel as I felt when I just started because Git used to scare me, but I can show you that it's quite easy and quite straightforward. Okay, so here we are now on my computer. So what we can do, we can just open a terminal. I am on Mac, so you can just go and open a terminal from Mac. On Windows, you can just go and download, what is it called, Git Bash on Windows, so you can do basically the same things. And here we are, we can do just some basic Linux commands. Let's go first to the desktop. We do CD desktop. Now we are inside the desktop and we just do make directory and we call it git test. So we're just creating a folder. A directory is a folder and it is now created in our desktop. Let me just bring it here for us so we can see. And here, if I open it, we can see that our folder is empty. So we can keep track of what we're doing. Now let's say we want to create two files. The first one we call it app.python and the other one we call it just index.html. Let's keep it very basic. Touch helps us create a file within the folder. And here we're creating two files. That's why we're putting one after the other. You can do three or more or just one if you want. If we press enter, yeah, we see that nothing happened because we didn't go inside of the file, it's the folder itself. So we do cd git test. Now we are inside of it and we can again do touch and we can see here that the two files appeared app.py index.html. This is all good for now. Let's say we started a project, we have an index.html file, an app.python file. Now if I delete something, it's gone forever. And that's where git is useful because we can start saving the progress and revert back if needed. We can bring people to collaborate with us. We can, for example, have a few people within our team working on the same project and so many cool things. So first we do git init. We're inside the folder, we're doing git init to initialize git inside the folder. And we can see here that we have this git folder that was generated automatically by doing this. But now we haven't saved anything yet. So the thing that we do, we do git add so that we add those files that we have into um, our project and if we do git add dot it will save all the files but if we give it a specific name of file then it will save just that specific file so for now we're going to do git add dot and after we do git add we just added the both files into our project we're going to commit and commit is how we save the changes that we've made. So git commit, we do dash m, and we always give a message to our commit. Over time, when you have a lot of people working on a project, when you have lots of saves in your project, it's good to go back and see the comments so that it helps you understand what happened at that time. So here we can say added Python and HTML files. And now we commit it. So what we've seen so far, we saw how to initialize Git, we saw how to add the files and how to commit. These are three very important components of Git already. But here, let's look at a few other things that can help us in here. So when we do, for example, Git log, it gives us all the commits that happened before. So we can see there was one commit, we have an ID for it. And this ID can be useful at some point if we wanna go back to a previous commit, but with that's something we'll look into very shortly and we have git status git status only tells us where we are in what branch we, it says that we are on branch master 
and by default when we start a git we are on a master branch there is a branch created for us and just think of it as let's say you're playing a video game and you play and you save your progress along the way your progress is saved on the master branch when you play a game just you but if a friend comes to your place and wants to play the same game with you and you don't want to touch that progression you will create a new one and you're gonna save alongside it and that will be like a new branch and the particularity of git is that at some point you can merge them let's say your friend unlock some sort of uh, bonus in the game but you want to add it to your own storyline in git you can't do that by merging so here let's say we want to create a second branch and the way we do it we do git checkout and we do dash b and we give a name to the new branch we just here call it new branch very basic now we can see here it says switch to a new branch called new branch and for us to have a look we can just do git branch and it will give us all the branches that we have. We can see we have two, the master and the new branch. And we can see the new branch, we are inside of it right now. And if you wanted to go back to the other one, it's as simple as doing git checkout and the name of the branch we go into. So git checkout and we do master. And now we switch to the master branch. But let's go back to the new branch. And let's say we are going to make some updates. Now we are inside the new branch and let's say I want to create a new file. Let's say me and you are collaborating and I am going to create a new branch and add a new file. So I'll do touch and I will call a file, let's say design.py as well. And we can see here that it was created in our git test folder, but it was created on the new branch that we did. Now we didn't add it officially to git and we didn't commit it. So next steps always git add dot dot all the files then we can do git commit dash m always to leave a message when we commit and we can say added design file and now it committed the changes into our new branch if we want to go and do git log we can see that we have two commits one that happened in the master and one that happened in the new branch, which is very interesting. So now if I go back to the master branch, we do git check out master. What we should notice is that the design.py will disappear from our main folder, as we can see here, because it wasn't committed to the master folder. It was committed in the new branch. And that's the power of git. If someone works alongside your project, they don't have to necessarily mess with your code. They can do whatever they want in their own branch and then they can request to merge the insights into the master branch and you can even approve it. That's something we can see on GitHub later on in the video. So now we are in the master branch and we don't see the new updates. If I go back to the other branch, I can see that design.py again appears in here. And let's say I wanna merge. So if I want to merge, I will do git merge and we're going to merge into the master branch. And I will do git merge master. It says already up to date. What we should do, we should go to git master here. We don't have yet the design file. We can do git merge and we can merge new branch to the master. And here we can see that design.py was added and we officially merged the new branch into the master and now everything that we had in the new branch was added to the master. So this is basically how you work with Git. There are other ways of merging. There is a rebase as well, but I don't want to overcomplicate the tutorial so far. I just want to keep it very basic, straightforward so they can play around with the basics, initialize, add your files, commit them with a message. You can look at the git log to see all the commits, git status to have a look at which branch we are in, and also git branch to look in which branch you are currently inside of. In our case right now we are into the master branch. And, uh, and yeah, let's say now we want to revert back to a previous commit. We do git log and we see that we have these two commits. Let's say we want to revert back to the first one before we even created that design file. We don't want it anymore. We can just go and grab this ID of the commit 
and we can just do git checkout and we can put the ID and we can just do enter. And as you can see, the design file disappeared because we reverted back to a previous commit. And that's the whole power of Git is that you can play around, go back into previous commits. And that's why it's important to leave meaningful comments for your Git all the time. And if we look now, we will see that there is an added branch. It's not a real branch. It's like an intermediate kind of branch, which doesn't exist, meaning that you can't just go into it but the purpose of this one is to not mess up with the master branch or the new branch it can give you a visibility on going back to the commit and then it's up to you to choose if you want to go into it or not so now if i do just git and i do check out master you can see that the design will come back like nothing happened so that's good it doesn't directly go to the commit and remove everything that you've done but it puts in a intermediate branch that is virtual doesn't yet exist now we're gonna link git to github think of github as a website in the cloud where you can store your gits and you can collaborate with others they can access it as long as you put it as public and i will show you exactly how to set it up step by step which is fairly easy and straightforward let's say we go to github here we are on github you first go create your account if you didn't create and you just go into your repositories and you can do create a new one a repository remember is just a folder we'll do here youtube tutorial you can give it a description you can put it public or private and a readme file is a file where you put details about your project so for now we just skip this we we'll just do create repository and now we haven't yet connected it to anything you can manually come and input some files in here but no we're gonna use git in here so we can see here we have this git remote add origin and literally we just copy this one and we just go here and we paste it and now what this did is that it's trying to remotely connect to github our folder which is local and then we're gonna push when we go from the local into github we're pushing the, the data into github and if we do the opposite we're gonna pull the data from github into our local machine so, so now we're gonna push we have an error here because on github we see that it says main but in our case it says master so that's a quick change to make and we can see here that we have all this done and basically it says that the branch is set up to track origin master so if we go back in here if i just refresh and as you can see, we have app.py, design.py, and index.html. All of them were pushed into GitHub. And if we make any changes in here, we can then pull the insights from GitHub back to our system. But one thing that we notice here, we can see that we only have one branch. We only see the master. We didn't see the new branch that we created. And that's because we only pushed the master branch. We didn't push the new branch. So let's do that. In order to push the new branch, we're just gonna do git push origin and we call the new branch, new branch. And we see now that we push the new branch and if we go back, if we refresh, we should see here the new branch. And any changes we make, we can track them on GitHub as long as we push the changes from the local into GitHub. And if we make any changes from GitHub, we need to pull them back into local so that we always have the saves in our local machine and on GitHub. I hope you found this video very helpful. When I started with Git, it used to feel very daunting and very difficult to be honest. But after just getting this basics of using Git, it makes everything simpler. Yes, there are more things, more advanced concepts, but basically as long as you know how to save your progress, how to commit, how to add the files, how to push the saves into GitHub, how to pull them back into your local machine. That's how you collaborate with people and that's mostly what's required from you. So remember, Git is a way for you to save your progress and GitHub is where you really store it so that you can share it with people on the internet. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like it and subscribe to the channel if it's not already done. I make videos on data analysis and data science and my own journey. I've made a video where I analyze a football data set live predicting who is going to win the Spanish championship. 
So if you're into data analysis or into football, give it a watch, you'll find it just here.